here with Jessica Simons from US. Uh, she's the director of Emerald Eyes. Um, and Emerald Eyes, her film, is a biographical docu fantasy based on the life and works of uh, American poet Diane Wakowski. I hope the pronunciation is, is correct. And um, her film is very interesting because instead of presenting a biography uh, of, the, of, the, of the, uh, the American poet, she, um, uh, she takes us on a metaphorical journey through Wakowski's psyche. So uh, it's a very particular film and we liked it very much. So we were very glad to, in, to have it in our selection this year. And um, yeah, we find it very fascinating because um, uh, we, we, we found that this film opens, opens up a question that is also highlighted by Paul Gonter, who wrote a review about her film. And the question is this, and the question is, uh, uh, is Paul Gonter who, who, who wrote it, but we would like to pose it to, uh, to Jessica now. So um, what makes a biography? And uh, do you think, is it a, just a list of facts uh, strung together uh, by narrative that summarize a whole lifetime? Or is it, does this just scratch the surface and biography maybe is something else? So uh, what, how do you feel about this topic? <laughs> Well, thank you for asking that, because I think that, you know, even since that review came out, I've been thinking a lot about that because biographies are very popular. We see a lot of, uh, you know, biopics and documentaries, uh, character portraits coming out. And so people, you know, want to know and connect with other people. Um, but one of the uh, goals I had with Emerald Ice is to explore, like, you know, what can count for a biography that goes on inside of ourselves that's not external. So a lot of the stuff that is in Emerald Ice may or may not have physically happened, but she writes about it as though it were true because it has very poetic or metaphorical significance to her life. And so um, one, of the, one of the poems, uh, poems is about incest. Um, about her having sex with her brother. She doesn't have a brother. Um, and so what that poem was really about was a sense of feeling of taboo and um, feeling very uh, like a lot of shame for something that happened in her life. And she used a fiction to be able to express it to the world in a way that she thought was, you know, um, reflective of her experience. And so, but it's also kind of a mythology, of course. And within our own selves, we all have our own mythology of, oh, I'm a college professor, oh, I'm an artist, oh, I'm this and I'm that, but not one of them make up the whole entirety of what a person is. And so um, I think that biography definitely does extend upon uh, the facts in our lives because some of the most significant things that happen to us well, I'll speak for myself, is that, you know, when something I know is true and something maybe I'm struggling with to be, to be not true in my own life, like maybe a longing, maybe a desire, something I want to happen, but it's not physically happening, is that more or less true or more or less significant than, you know, something that factually happened? Um, and so I think that there's a lot within biography that um, that is being explored, I think, by nature of just how popular they are right now. Um, but yes, I think that by and large biography is something that is pretty underexplored, at least in untraditional ways where we might ponder or ask ourselves like what fictions in our lives add to the, the significance in them just as much as the truths. Yeah, yeah, this is, a, is very interesting. I, I, I think it's really also very contemporary because uh, we are filled with images and and filled with stories and storytellings and then these storytellings actually are becoming part of our life i mean this has always happened in you for humans but now maybe we are even we have even more possibilities than before to get in touch with so many storytellings that then it's true that our biographies are composed by a lot of different pieces not just the, our own viewable experiences maybe yeah 
And yeah, and I found this film very interesting also because um, is, I mean, is a film where there is a very deep dialogue between a filmmaker and a poet, like, uh, because you had somehow to, yeah, to try to enter her, her psyche, her mind. And so, uh, I mean, this is also very interesting for this festival because we are actually um, at uh, this festival uh, was born as a literature and poetry festival. And then we introduced the, the film uh, section, film screenings. So we are very interested in these um, possibilities of interactions between poetry and film, uh, poetry and yeah, audiovisuals. So um, what you did is a very um, interesting process, I, I think also for you as a person and as a filmmaker, I guess. And I was wondering if you, uh, yeah, how did, how did you work on this film? And also, if you also had a real contact with, with Diane or if it was just your process? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I love this question so much. And um, because I did a lot of research on Diane before reaching out to her, it is um, her voice in the film and she loves it. Um, and I did take a lot of artistic liberties with her words in some ways, um, but she actually really liked the approach. And she said, if I had asked to interview her formally, she would have declined because she wants to, you know, there, when you build up a mythology like that, like a documentary can take someone along on the ride or reveal all the secrets. And she didn't want, you know, it to be the, the, the former reveal all the secrets route. And so, when I was doing my research before reaching out to her, <clears throat> I, knew, I had read a lot about the way that she thinks about poetry. And for her, the reader in their imagination, you know, completes the poem, right? It's kind of like when I'm going through and reading through all of her work, some work is gonna connect to me because, you know, just of what have I have experienced in the world that, that might be resonating off of her experience. And so I think that it definitely is a conversation between me and Diane because that, uh, you know, 15 minutes, of, and it's pretty dialogue heavy, it's from over 20 poems that span the course of her entire career. And she wrote her first poem in the 50s. And so <laughs> I was trying really hard to have nuggets throughout her career because as far as I know, this is the only film about her. And so I wanted it to be somewhat representative of a, not just one facet of her career, but several different facets. And so the film itself has excerpts of over 20 poems in them, but kind of spliced together in new ways to create one new giant poem. And um, before recording, I did, um, oh, actually I recorded the piano first and I sent it to her and I was like, this is the essence of what I want to do. Like, let's work together. And she was like, you get me, yes. Um, so that was really rewarding. Um, but when I finally did connect and reach out to her, um, I showed her my screenplay and I was like, this is what I want to do to your work. Like, is it okay? Because um, only one poem, it's the incest one about her brother. Um, that was the first poem she ever got published. And so that one is in its entirety, but that's the only poem that's complete. And the rest are highly, highly edited. There's like lines that are next to film, uh, poems like written a few decades ago, um, then cut to a poem that, you know, she wrote in 2018. Um, and I just wanted that kind of um, feeling that we weren't just in one experience. And so how does one go through and read, she, she has over 20 volumes, like she's very prolific and so talented. How does one even begin to choose what to focus on? I chose what resonated with me, you know? I chose the things that I remember reading and felt like, wow, you know, like I feel something, um, you know, different than when I started this poem. And that was kind of my criteria for picking it. And I think that allowed me to edit it in such a way where it felt like one poem. And I think, I'm hoping because I did it with such care that that's why Diane really liked it. But in the end, yeah, it's, it's a conversation between the poet and the filmmaker. 
And then it's also, I think another conversation gets added when you turn it into a film, because now it's the poet, the filmmaker, and the audience, and all three of us get to go on this journey together. And I think that by essence of the project, it's still Diane's work, but it's both of us in our interaction that you're kind of bearing witness to. And hopefully like the viewer gets other kind of significance. Like I always say, you're gonna watch this and you're not gonna learn a thing about Diane, but hopefully you'll understand her a little bit better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, wow, that's that's very interesting. I mean, for sure it's a film that is really touching you. I mean, that's what I felt. So, of course, I don't know if I know Diane's better after this film or not, but this is also the, the beauty of it. Like you, I, I, I can understand that someone who is a poet uh, doesn't want to have a, like a linear biography like this is really... It's really, it's really understandable and is is very nice and interesting. So, for sure, you can feel from this film that is really touching something. So, I'm I'm sure that the audience also of our festival will will be able to feel it. And yeah, my actually my my next question that I wanted to ask you was related to the monologue, but you but you all already answered because I was curious about mm. yeah who wrote this monologue and. It's interesting to know that uh, there was this um, this very in deep interaction between you and the and Diane's work, and also Diane's as a person who who felt that you um, your your interpretation and your uh, creation was uh, somehow resonating with with her, and yeah, I think this is a very interesting process. And also uh, probably not, also probably quite rare actually. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting the fact that is very much in line with what we are searching or what we are interesting to explore, interested to explore because uh, mm, something that we, a project that we just created somehow, actually the, the first, um, the first, time we, we, we started this project was last year and it is this project in which we asked to some of some of the poets participating in our festival to write a poem uh, about inspired or about or yeah inspired from one of the films that we have in our selection and this um, is for us very interesting. There are no no fixed rules for this because, of course, yeah. uh, it's a totally totally new kind of process. So uh, we are also searching for yeah possible rules and also how to break then these possible rules that are gets created. So um, so the interesting thing is also that one of the poets chose your film to <laughs> to to compose uh, her or his poem. I don't remember. We will. Uh, we will publish this poem, this uh, poem on our on our website in the next days. So I find it very interesting because it's like this um, this process that took uh, that started with you, then can always continue. And of course, I mean, everyone has his own interpretation and his own um, how to say his own feeling about uh, the the original. Uh, the original, the origin of it, which is Diane's work, but it's interesting to, to know that it's always possible to uh, transform something together or taking inspiration from someone else and um, yeah, and I make something that. new. This is yeah, uh, oh, I love that because that's I feel like that's where the magic happens. Like, I think about all the time if I never would have read Diane's work, like. I would be very different and I would never have had that chance to respond. And so facilitating more of those areas where people can, you know, communicate and have that conversation in creative ways is so cool. I'm so thrilled. My, <laughs> my film got chosen or my film got chosen. I, I definitely will send it to Diane when she, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. When, that, when that, it comes out. That's very nice. And yeah, actually we are convinced that this is uh, what art is made for in the end I mean to inspire so so of course if someone who uses maybe a different medium 
can take inspiration from anything, uh, any artistic uh, production. And it's interesting to know, to see how this inspiration can change shapes through different mediums also and through different persons. So yeah, we, we, we are going to keep this project and your, for sure your film and your process uh, inspired us a, a lot and uh, gave us also much more strength, strength to go on with this. So that's, uh, we are very glad <laughs> and very grateful for this. <laughs> and yeah, uh, my last question is just uh, if you are now working on new projects and or yeah, if you want to tell us something about what you are doing now. Yeah. Um, so after I made this film, um, and I made it in grad school, and a few of my colleagues uh, the whole time were very like, is it going to be more than just pretty pictures? Like, what else is it? And so right after this film got made, I was really insecure that I didn't know how to make a real, like, a real movie. And so I like took a few years to like make something more traditional just to, you know, well, one, cause you know, it, the subject matter really lent itself to a more straightforward film. And I just wanted to prove to myself that like, I, you know, like you can, you're, you're breaking rules because you can, you know, like, and you're choosing to. And so I'm really happy because for the last uh, couple of years I've been returning to what I like to call like docu-fantasy work. And it's things that I feel like have nonfiction merit to them, but that we can explore in other ways, like not just like a fiction project, but how does documentary intersect with fiction and, you know, our dreams and our desires and experimental stuff. And so um, currently I'm making a documentary, but it's a hybrid experimental type of film about Medusa the Greek Gorgon <laughs> of uh, Greek mythology. And um, one of the things that's different about it is that I'm really trying to not have any very uh, of the, let's go back in time and have these reenactments. I'm trying to, or, you know, to show Medusa back in ancient Greece, you know, cause that's like a lot of what we see in uh, other documentaries about the subject matter. And so what the whole film is kind of trying to wonder is like, what's Medusa's perspective? Uh, because every, basically like most things out there from the hero's perspective or the hero's journey. And so this film kind of looks at how the hero's journey can be highly misogynistic and highly uh, perpetuate really, you know, uh, horrific ways in which we see um, people, especially women. Um, and so the film is also about gender violence and things of that nature, but it's highly experimental, but also highly documentary driven. And so that's, that's kind of where my heart lies is kind of trying to play with the format. Um, with Emerald Ice, like I always kind of knew what I wanted it to look like and I, what I wanted it to feel like and sound like. It was highly storyboarded and highly scripted. But with this film, um, I am relying a little bit more on the nonfiction side of things to tell a very holistic uh, story about Medusa. And so my challenge and what I'm really excited about is to find really organic and meaningful ways for the nonfiction to interact with and influence the things that aren't nonfiction. Um, and so I'm just really excited to be returning to that. I don't know when it will be done. <laughs> it's one of the, it's a passion project. So I've been working on it since like, for like three years already. And it'll probably take another three years, but mm -hmm. I'm, but I love it. So I'm in it. I'm totally in it. I want to imagine what Medusa's story from her perspective. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It sounds, sounds very interesting. And I mean, I, I really appreciate this kind of projects that are really, uh, also taking so much time because sometimes it's true that um, you grow with your project so uh, it's important you you wouldn't be able to give the same things if you wouldn't take the right time and so it's very interesting and uh, it seems that your interest is uh, in this uh, somehow links between reality and and mythology is growing so it's very nice to hear and I'm very curious to, to watch the film when it will be ready. So 
Um, Thank you. Me I too. Mean, I will definitely send it your guys' way because it'll be very much influenced by literature. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of stories about Medusa will be in there. Great. So it'll be interesting. Yes, to say yeah, the least. Yeah, definitely we will be interested to to screen it. And um, yeah, I mean, now I, I don't have any other question for, for today. I mean, I, I, of course, invite everyone uh, who still hasn't watched your film to watch it because it's, it will be available on, from our website or from our YouTube channel uh, until next Sunday. So yeah, 24th. Of October and it's really worth <laughs> to to take some time to watch it because it's um, yeah really for 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 me it was really it was really nice to have it in the selection and I liked it very much and I mean I am a filmmaker myself and I got also a lot of inspiration from it so it's really oh. worth to watch it. That means so, so much. That's <laughs> the highest compliment. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> And it was very nice to talk to you. Uh, and yeah, you are always welcome to our festival whenever you want, when it, when it will be possible <laughs> to travel more easily or also just uh, to have a chat like this. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. And thank you guys so much for having the festival and for doing such a great job and for that really cool uh, poetry response project. Like never heard of anything like it. And I hope it keeps going. Yeah, we we do. we 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 are um, yeah we hope as well and we will keep you updated about the development of this. Oh, so excited! Thanks again. Yeah, thank you, Jessica, for for your time. It was very nice to to meet you. Thank you.